So at this point, you've inevitably played around with Scala enough that you have hit a situation where you see an error that prints out a whole bunch of lines of stuff. Uh, we can actually create one of these if we write a little program and we'll do an, our import dot underscore and I'm just going to have this program say read int. Okay, right now it's very simple Scala of try catch but instead of okay so if I type in a one everything's happy what happens if I type in ABC then you get something like this so you've probably seen something like this pop up at some point when you did something wrong uh, in running a program and in this case because ABC is not a number we get something called a number format exception uh, what is being printed out here is called a stack trace it is what called what so this main called main called process called run lots of this is inside of just the the scripting environment for Scala the stuff that's in our code is right here okay and so we can see where we were inside of our program and from here we tried from line three we tried to call readint and that wound up causing problems and sure enough readint is on line three so there's a little lesson in learning the how to read the stack traces what I'm interested in for this video is how we deal with this so Scala has another construct called a try catch and the try catch can be used as an expression or a statement like almost everything else in the language so it can give you back a value and so if I just wanted to deal with that situation I could say val i equals and then I'm going to try to do something so I try <clears throat> generally we have a block of code for the try and when we try to do something it might fail in which case we need to catch the exception that results from that failure what goes inside of the catch block is cases just like a match now if I do this this is not recommended this would actually anything that could possibly go wrong inside of this code we would wind up catching it and doing whatever it is that we're doing in this case I actually want to give back zero so there's gonna be a very simple version where we uh, just reads an integer if they type in something that's not an integer they get the value zero instead this is too much there are lots of things that could go wrong that we're not able to recover from uh, an example would be an out of memory error now granted in this little program it's not likely we're going to get an out of memory error but as a general rule you shouldn't do this in fact I have a funny feeling that if I run this we get a warning Okay, it says, warning, this catches all throwables. Uh, if it's really intended, use case yeah, to signify it. But basically the idea is you shouldn't do this. Okay, So what should we do instead? Well, we saw above that this created a number format exception, and that's the type of error that I want to be able to handle here. Another type of pattern that we haven't seen or talked about previously is a pattern that matches a type. So I can basically say I'm having a variable E but E has to be of type number format exception if the exception is anything other than a number format exception it will actually still crash it will throw the exception and bad things will happen but in the case of a readint the error that we know how to deal with is a number format exception so running this code once again if I type in a number everything's happy but if I type in ABC it doesn't crash and we can see what it does if we print line out the value of I once again if I type in a number I get that number If I type in ABC now I get zero so the try attempted to read the end it got a bad value it threw an exception but instead of printing it out and crashing the program that exception came here into this catch it happened to be a number format exception and we have given it instructions here 
that if it gets a number format exception, it just returns the value of zero. We can use this to build what you might call a safe read int function. So instead of calling read int, we could call our safe version of read int. And of course, read int returns an integer. And what is this going to do? Well, I'll go ahead and put curly braces there. It's going to try to do the read int just like we did below. And of course, because this is a block of code, you could have lots of stuff inside of here. And then your catches would deal with any of the errors that they that you knew how to dealt to deal with. If we get a number format exception, and that's still the only exception that we really know how to to deal with for read int. So number format exception. Well, I don't want to just give back zero. I want to tell the user that wasn't a valid integer and then basically ask them again. Print line. That wasn't a valid int. Please try again. And how do we try again? Well, we're in the section on recursion, so of course we're going to do the whole process again. Safe read int. So if they type in ABC here, it's going to throw this exception. It's going to tell them that wasn't a number, and then it's going to call safe read int again, which jumps back up to here and reads another number, and repeat and repeat until they enter something that is a valid number. That allows us to put that in place of here, Safe read int. So if I just type in a number, everything's happy. If I type in ABC, it says that wasn't valid int, try again. I have to type in a number, and then I get that number. Now personally with my students, I am willing to make the assumption that the user always types in something that is correct input. Not everyone feels that way, and of course production programs that's not the case. Users can screw things up in all types of different ways. And so you need to have something that's more robust. Uh, so feel free to get into the habit of using a function like this to make it so that when you read values, the behavior is appropriate and it doesn't just crash your program if the user types in something that wasn't the type that you were reading.